and is uh, set up ready to go. We'll just give it another 30 seconds or so. We'll just wait for confirmation from the, the organizer that uh, everything's fine. Just let us know by saying uh, perfect. All right, we're on stage. Good morning, thank you ever so much for uh, joining us. Um, it feels very much like a, a radio show <laughs> or a podcast. Um, we're doing things um, completely different now and at these sort of times. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Detective Constable James Taverner, uh, also present as my colleague. You see uh, Chris Coupland. We're from the Cybercrime Investigation Team at Humberside Police. Uh, it's a bit like we start opening an interview, actually. <laughs> the time by my watch is 10.53 hours. Uh, and we're currently in a um, covert building in Humberside Place, where we work from. We're part of a, um, a team. Um, it's only a small team, but we're cyber um, semi-experts. We've been on several courses to allow us to um, progress ourselves from just being a regular detective to being interested in more um, cyber um, offences, uh, which we'll cover as we go on uh, throughout the presentation. Um, if there's any questions at all, or any point or anybody wants to discuss anything, please feel free to use the um, um, the, the comment section or the chat section. We'll also be available a little time afterwards for any, any sort of questions or anything like that you may uh, wish to discuss. Policing in the uh, digital era um, has moved on quite considerably from the old fashioned um, view of what a police officer would do. Uh, and almost all elements of crime now are have a digital element, so to speak. So what used to be in the olden days, a police officer in his black cape and a truncheon walking around the street and trying to identify if a burglary has occurred um, with basic methods uh, has gone. Um, nowadays, all sorts of uh, crimes invariably have some sort of digital elements to them, whether that's um, text messages, um, social media, people saying that they've done things, and uh, or, or or YouTube video posts. You see these riots that are on, and the, oh, the, the, someone videoed it and uploaded it to YouTube within moments of uh, the offence occurring. Um, so quite invariably, we have um, regular investigators contacting us and saying, have you got any ideas of what we can do to progress the investigation by um, looking at the digital footprints uh, that people may have left? Uh, and there you can see a footprint with the um, potential applications. I'm just thinking then, um, as you can see, all of the screen regards to obviously us both presenting at the moment. Um, so, <clears throat> obviously, this is just a visual representation of what the uh, internet looks like. Generally, the, uh, the surface web, as we like to call it, uh, which is your standard, uh, the likes of Google searching and, you know, the usual service providers. Um, so, the, the actual standard stuff that you would see as you search in Google or Bing or whichever service you use, uh, would be generally the content that you would see about the 4% of the internet. The actual other part of it is where the data is stored underneath the surface web, uh, basically covering where all the data is, where all the content is. So when you type in searching pictures for dogs or what have you, uh, then it goes down underneath, finds all the data and brings it back. It's like a library. The front of the library is the face of it being the 4%. And the data held within it is pretty much the remainder. The other bit on the side there, the little arrow that goes off uh, totally to a side, is the uh, the dark web. Um, the basically the dark web. Obviously, we do come with a lot of offences in the dark web, where all the naughtiness happens, where they try and hide their identity. Um, it's not an index. Uh, there isn't an index of the dark web. You can't type in pictures of cats, and you go to pictures of cats. You have to know where you're going. You have to know the actual point of contact, where you want to go. Hence, a lot of the naughty people 
share their locations within the dark web so they know exactly where they're going at any one time. Um, so what we do do in the police, we do start now investigating the dark web. We do have dark web teams around the country specifically looking at the dark web offences. Um, so that's pretty much where we are at the moment. I think we've just covered uh, the majority of uh, what this slide's referring to. Um, it's difficult to try and pitch this um, this presentation appropriately without actually seeing the audience. There's going to be a wide range of people that are absolute experts and regularly visit the dark web via um, the, the Tor browser or whatever browser that you, you, you may seem to think of. Um, the dark place, the dark web is a place where criminals work. Do we need to go there? Is a question. Uh, and no is uh, what we've written down here. Um, there are lawful uses for the dark web, but will not be required in this country. I mean, that's quite up to debate. I mean, the thing, the thing is, the dark web's developing all the time, and it was developed um, originally uh, for a positive reason and to. Uh, um, for security measures, I think it was the um, American Navy that originally developed it. Uh, I'm sure some people are aware. So back in um, June 2016, um, NATO um, had a meeting and the NATO Secretary General at the time um, said that we will recognize cyberspace in an operational domain, just like air, sea and land. So we're looking back to um, the olden days, 10,000 BC, where we've got warriors there with their sticks and their um, clubs. And then as things moved on and progressed and technology increased, we had warriors that had armor and swords. Future goes on, and we've, we've now got more advanced armor with swords, and then we have inventions of guns and military and that's what uh, war used to look like in the sort of modern era so moving forward this is the sort of uh, attacks we're talking about by a, by a click on the keyboard a cyber attack quite prominent at the minute with um, the US elections and our elections and all things going on with COVID uh, fake news is all of the, the rage and these sort of things happening on Constantly, all the time, we've been dealing with a cyber attack this morning. Um, and it's simply someone behind the keyboard pressing the green button. Uh, there's no need to be um, getting yourself at risk as we did before. And these, that's basically what the NATO Secretary General was saying. We need to consider cyberspace as an operational domain. And we need to up our game. The um, infograph here is more to do with what people do generally on the internet. Um, we've had numerous sort of like developments of this uh, 60 seconds. What the saying is, 60 seconds every time we've been on here for at least a good five minutes or so. Um, in those 60 seconds, this has happened on the internet. This isn't everything that's happening on the internet, this is just a snapshot. Um, so, for example, 1.3 million logins and YouTube, 4.7 million videos shared. Um, so, and this is just a reflection on how busy the internet actually is. Um, I was in a meeting uh, during the course of the first COVID pandemic uh, shutdown, and they said internet usage increased by 71%. So, this is a standard day of 60 seconds, so an increase of 71%. Uh, then our uh, internet usage is very, very busy. Um, and with that comes criminality, unfortunately. So there's many, many versions of this right back to quite a few years ago and up to current day. So. The, um, this information is probably slightly out of date now anyway. This is back in 2018. At certain points, they generate some statistics regards to how much it costs uh, for cyber criminals and how much money they actually make from uh, us in the UK and from around the world. These statistics are generally in the UK. The top one is 2018, 
17 million Britons were hit by cybercrime. Um, so doesn't seem particularly a lot when you look at the, con the quantity of people in the UK. Um, but out of those 17 million um, Britons, some of those will have lost money, some of those will have lost services, and services to many, if the business is out there, obviously your customers. Um, it counts for about 50% of all UK crime. Um, I think that's clearly grown recently, because bearing in mind cybercrime can be anything from social media right through to service takedowns, company takedowns, so it's a very broad spectrum. Uh, there is a vast increase on people. If they can't go out and curb it, they'll sit behind a computer. The global economy, it says it costs the global economy £461 billion uh, online in 2018. That's considerably more now. And when you look at that in comparison to the global cost of heroin, cocaine and cannabis industry in 2018, that was only £270 billion. So not far off the hackers stole twice as much as they make in heroin, cocaine and cannabis. So obviously becoming a very lucrative business. Computer Misuse Act 1990. Um, what I would say about this is, um, I think you should note the, the, the year that the Computer Misuse Act uh, came into fact in 1990. At that stage, we were at very early infancy of using the internet. It certainly wasn't um, as widespread now. People's mobile phones were physically the size of a brick, if they did have one at all. Maybe sometimes it was a, um, like a briefcase style thing. Uh, at that stage, we've made some legislation which we um, have tried to, you know, future proof, but all of thinking, thinking about it is very difficult to do so. So in our department, the Cybercrime Department, we generally look at Computer, computer Misuse Act offences, um, uh, and that's what will be allocated to us. Um, and we'll go through some of them. Um, so Section 1 is unauthorised access to computer material. An example of that is simply leaving your phone and then your friend accesses it. That's basically a Section 1, unauthorised access to computer material. When you have it on the basic level that we've just described there, um, if we move that forward to a more of a corporate sort of level, you've got your computer on, you've got some very sensitive data, and um, somebody from a different department comes into your department and looks at your computer and starts having a look around. We've got then some compromised issues that could be sensitive, it could be medical records, it could be... Uh, important for your business that that sort of data doesn't go move around, and as such, these um, these offences carry quite a hefty um, sort of punishment uh, sentencing up to like five years for unauthorised access. And then when we start moving forward to more national infrastructure, we're talking ten years. So section two is unauthorised access with intent to commit or facilitate further offences. So. As we've described, with, um, you've left your computer on and someone's gone inside and used that data to commit further offences. Um, uh, section 3 is unauthorised acts with intent to impair uh, or recklessness as to impair, impairing the operation of computer. And what we're talking about there is um, a DDoS um, or, or other sort of um, things similar to that. Uh, for people that are not aware of what a DDoS means, that's a distribution uh, denial of service attack. Um, so say, for example, <coughs> you've got, um, you're on a computer game and somebody has sent lots and lots of packets of data from various other computers to your, com your, your computer that you're using. That computer that you're using will then suffer, um, will not be able to go on the internet because your computer will be, too busy trying to process all the data that's coming in from other directions, uh, subsequently knocking you offline. A, re a real world example of a DDoS is uh, coming up at the end of November, uh, Black Friday. Uh, many people, thousands of people, will be getting online to get their bargains, and unfortunately, many of those servers won't be able to take the amount of people logging onto the websites, so the websites will crash. 
uh, which is pretty much in an example of uh, denial of service. Uh, but these these guys, Section Three, are actually doing it deliberately rather than actually uh, trying to get a bargain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think we've had an example of um, <clears throat> a complainant complaining that August has been deemed off <laughs> no. on Black Friday and can't yeah. go on to get the deals. Amazon. Oh, we're the greatest uh, crime team that's good ever. <clears throat> we'll move on to um, one of the most common known uh, offences, uh, which is fishing. As you can imagine, in cybercrime, um, it's really cool and hip. So we have really cool and hip uh, names for offences that we We've, we've, we've mashed around with real words, sort of English, and uh, taken as our own. So fishing, uh, as you can see in the caption, there's a man trying to dangle a fishing rod. And if you can think about that, that's exactly what we're talking about. So common example is someone sent an email. It's from Fred Smith or Argos or whoever it is, and you weren't expecting it. And it's not really from Argos. It just looks like it is. You click on a link, you open an attachment, and would you believe it? Someone's come in, or some piece of software has been dropped onto your computer, or you've been sent to a malicious or fake website where you may put in your credentials, and um, bad things happen as a result. Anything to say about that, Chris? No, no, uh, HMIC, PayPal, they're still the. Uh number one and number two uh, for uh, fishing uh, companies. Uh, so you basically don't click on the links and uh, go to the website yourself if you've got a query. Yeah, we, we, I think there's other sort of um, things that, the, um, that they can do in relation to fishing. It, it upgrades to what they call spear fishing, which is like a, a play on like a spear being more targeted. So usually um, if it's, Specific to somebody would say, "Oh, you've been spearfished." You know, hi, Fred Smith. Um, I'm particularly going for him. And if they go for the CEO or the main person in the business, it's called whaling, because we're going for the uh, the big fish. Smishing and vishing, another play to make it all nice and cool. Um, smishing, as you can imagine, is SMS uh, version of phishing. And we get that all the time. Uh, I personally get it literally on a weekly basis. You know, your Lloyd's account, uh, as someone's tried to get access, uh, and I'm thinking, I haven't got a Lloyd's account. Um, but they're like, oh, your Lloyd's account, please click on this link. And quite clearly, as you can see, it will be Googly or something that's not Lloyd's or something. And what I would always suggest is going, if you are concerned, Go direct. Um, don't click on the link at all. We'll go directly to um, your own bank account and deal with it via that method uh, and delete the uh, the email. They, they can't, you can um, forward those um, things on or report them to Action Fraud, which we'll give you a link to at the end, so that we know where where, where these sort of sites are and can maybe take them down. And phishing is uh, voice or video um, phishing which is an example of the lady there. Yeah, computer service frauds, what we call them, is quite often done by the, the form of vishing, uh, basically where they ring up, your computer's got a virus, and uh, surprisingly enough, they're uh, fantastic that they can help you. Um, and once they've done, they've managed to get all your details, all your login details, access your computer, and empty your bank accounts. Um, that's quite a popular thing to do by vishing rather than any of the other methods. Ah, so here is an example of the of um, the S on the end of the HTTP. It used to be that HTTP was the standard, uh, and as things progressed, we wanted a more secure may, uh, way of accessing uh, the internet. Um, so we would set up a um, security S um, security level. Um, onto the uh, the URL, onto the the, the, app, the website address that you're putting onto. Uh, this certificate can be purchased. Um, you know, it's, it's not sort of a um, something that's only restricted to 
bona fide companies. If you wanted to set up a secure um, HTTP um, URL, you are able to do so. Uh, and in this, in this example, it's not PayPal, it's PayI or PayEPal that have set up the, um, this secure URL. So just really, I think it's just to make sure that you're aware that this is a common common sort of um, trick that they pull. They think, oh, well, I'll, put, I'll buy a secure um, a certificate and I'll have my email um, in my uh, URL set up with HTTPS. So you won't bother looking at the, um, at the domain. Yeah, the, the NCSC, uh, the National Cyber Security Centre uh, at GCHQ, um, recently have launched its uh, suspicious email reporting service, the SERS. Um, at the very bottom of the screen there, there is a link, uh, report at phishing.gov.uk. Um, they're more than happy for people to send the uh, links to their emails, send their emails themselves. Um, so basically what that does is just a gathering up of reports of vulnerabilities that have been sent out. Hence the reason why they can actually specifically say that the HMIC or the uh, PayPal or eBay, etc., are the most fished companies. By the, What I mean by that is that they actually use the details of that company to fish or fish, etc., other people. The reason why they know that is because of data that they've gathered from people that have sent reports in. So the more reports they get, the better the intelligence gathering. And the more the, the intelligence gather, they can basically look at the individual emails themselves. They can look at finding a deep, a deep in, sorry, dig deeper into those emails and or whatever source that was sent by, and try and basically find out if there's a commonality between it all. And if there is a commonality, then they can also apply to get those sites taken down. Um, so the, the SARES process or report at issuing.co.uk um, is a link that's now current and live. Personal uh, online security. We've all seen these, we've all seen the apps. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, etc., etc. Um, well, I think it was a bit of a quiz. Do people know what all the yeah, application? Gonna, yeah, we're going to quiz you. Um, <laughs> if it was in face to face, we probably will do. It's hard to get any feedback, really. I'll give you, I think most of you people are aware this one's quietly more gamerish, Discord, modern, yeah. people with children, Irrit TikTok. irritating music, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Snapchat, things like that. Um, so the thing is, all these personal online um, apps or on your computer or etc., they all have facility within themselves to add extra security for you. Um, so you know you've got two-factor authentication, multi-factor authentication, etc., linked to all these apps. And it's a case of what you need to do is also consider what you're actually putting on these apps. Uh, because some people seem to think that just because they're in, within an app, it's um, it's safe, it's okay, I can send whatever images I wish to, um, and they feel safe in doing so because it's within an app. The difficulty is everybody has a screenshot facility. Everybody can actually look to compromise those actual those um, accounts. Um, so later on, if it doesn't cover it, then I'll cover regards to obviously situations that have come across regards to the breaching of these individual apps as well and how that can happen. Uh, but we'll check obviously as we're going through to see if it's, uh, you know, if there's development in that. A couple of ones of Uvu, not so much an issue now. We don't see very many of those. Uh, we've definitely got the Snapchats, the, uh, the Discords and uh, Pinterest, Facebook, etc. is obviously the very big boys and uh, very busy. Um, obviously, people do do their updates on their personal security on their apps. Obviously, everyone keeps up to date, don't we? Um, does anybody read the terms and conditions when they do the update? 
um, a little, quite a while ago, uh, one of the uh, big boys here, I'm not saying which one, but it's got a big F in a blue background, um, they wrote into the terms and conditions that they could turn your camera on and your microphone and monitor you. They said it was for marketing purposes, uh, but obviously lots of people got upset about that. It has changed now. But you signed up for it because it's in the terms and conditions. So when you click yes, just be careful what you're clicking yes to. Um, there's many, many things out there that do monitor you and watch what you're doing. Uh, it's always difficult, yeah. isn't it? Because you, you see a massive big text box hung up and it's like, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> you know, that's what you need to do to get on there. Three days later. Just be, just be, uh, just be mindful about, um, about that. What data are you giving away? <clears throat> this is a video of, it was a real example um, of a method of uh, gathering data. So we'll play the video. What's your name? Uh, What's your name? Alex. Alex. Are you Benjamin? Yes. If you like our Facebook page, we give you a free lunch and you get a free pastry. We have a deal in the day here. We have a deal in the day here. Hi there, come out. Okay. That goes on what we just said about security settings within social media. Uh, all that data was gathered up by um, data that was openly available on the internet uh, regards those people. So when they actually joined their Facebook site, they pretty much gathered a lot of information from them because their security settings weren't up to date and they weren't set their privacy settings correctly. It's just a real world example of data that can be obtained quite easily. Yeah, it's um, social media now is, is an essential tool, particularly uh, for the mental health uh, aspects of, uh, of people during these lockdowns. Um, and as such, I, I would urge people to um, have a bit of digital hygiene um, every so often. I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world, uh, and, but as police officers, we're sort of duty bound to to give you sort of cyber security advice and spend years and years and years banging on about make sure you lock your doors at night and, and lock your windows uh, well it wouldn't be right or it wouldn't be um, uh, wouldn't be you know inappropriate for us to say make sure that you do your settings on your facebook or any other social media you've got to ensure that the people that can see your data are people that you want them to want them to see them um we're happy that you, if you want to put stuff out there for everybody to see or you want to do videos for everybody to see, that's fine. But you should be aware that once those videos go out, then that they've gone out then. That's it. The, you know, there's no coming back. Um, as soon as you record anything digitally, that, that's it. It's out there. Uh, and that, you know, what you are now um, may not be the sort of thing that you want to show in 20 years' time. Um, when you sat in front of Lord Sugar asking for a job, for example. Uh, <laughs> um, anything further? Yeah, just <clears throat> just make uh, some things. Obviously, not knowing the audience, but if there's anyone in the audience out there that runs a Facebook business site uh, where the predominant selling is through uh, Facebook, just just be mindful. What considerations have you put in place if that Facebook site is breached? 
the data that you've got on that Facebook site, do you have a copy of it? Have you backed it up, whether it's via the cloud or some form of media to be able to have your data backed up? Because many companies that we're finding at the moment that have a data breach through Facebook, they lose their entire content and they lose the lot. Um, and unfortunately, that can have quite a detrimental issue with regards to a business process from there onwards, really, and many are closed. Um, so make some considerations about the data you're sharing and what data you keep external. So if you lost your social media account, could you still recover as a business? Um, make some considerations about that. There is a way of uh, backing up your Facebook account. Um, if you go on to the settings side, or I think if you search for help, there's a backup or make a download of your, uh, of your account. It gives you lots and lots of information as well uh, about what, you know, where you've logged in and such, and who's logged in and what device you've got logged in and things like that. So regular backups um, is something that we bang on about here all the time. And um, well, when we're talking about um, losing access to your account or account breaches, a lot of the time we're talking about um, someone either giving away their password to a colleague or a friend, uh, or we're talking about people people's use of really basic and um, silly passwords. And if any of you can see your password on the on the screen now, you should be ashamed of yourself. You're in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> you should be glad that we're not there mocking you <laughs> as, as we speak. Uh, this is the top 20 passwords that you see all of the time. And, um, you know, it's, it's so, you know, it's like giving your key to your house to every single person in the street. Um, whenever a buddy tries to get into your account, they'll do the uh, 12456 or password or QWERTY or anything like that uh, just to get in, or your name, they'll put in your name or your, your password one, password two or something like that. Um, and then they've got access to your, your account and then you're gonna lose it. Um, anything to say about passwords? Yeah, it's, it's basically a new method of uh, basically brute force uh, passwords, where before they used to try a number of passwords against one account, and it used to lock you out. So that's it, they can't try again. But what they're doing now, they're obtaining a list of passwords and trying that list. Basically, they get a list of, say, account details like email addresses, da, 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 and try one password with multiple accounts, which is called password spraying. So instead of trying multiple passwords against one account, they try it the other way around, which is one password with multiple accounts. So basically, they won't lock out. They're only trying that password once, but they will guarantee they will find a person that has an account number and their password that they've tried. Um, so it's just a different way of basically breaching somebody's passwords, that's all. Because we all use, um, or not we all, a lot of people use the same password for every single application that they've got. So as soon as you're getting access to one, you get access to more. Uh, so uh, the National Cyber Security Centre um, ad advise on, um, on, on passwords, basically. And their advice uh, is as follows. So... I'm sure in the universities or colleges, uh, certainly in this case, um, here on the side place, we often had um, instructions on how to make a good password. And it was always, oh, a capital letter, uh, put in a number, special character, and uh, before you know it, you've, you've created something called Troubadour, Troubadour Act 3, and um, it's almost impossible to remember and you would forget it and you're constantly monitoring the IT guys, oh, can you reset my password and, and all this. And in actual fact, when they worked out the maths surrounding it, um, we're talking about bits of data and um, how many guesses and how long it would take to, to work it out. For a computer, as we progress further and further in terms of computing power, it wouldn't take particularly long um, in fact, three days uh, to a thousand guesses a second to work out Troubadour. And um, it's very difficult for a human to remember those sort of things. 
So what they've said is, right, how about four random words? So a correct horse battery staple. And it's got 44 bits of entropy and should take 550 years for a computer to guess, which makes it really difficult. However, it's more, <laughs> it's easier for you, uh, a human to remember because it's a, a thing to note. Um, I probably would suggest perhaps putting in the odd um, uh, numerical value in between or um, special character if required. Um, however, keeping it memorable um, is paramount really. Um, also, uh, I don't know what your suggestions are around password managers, but um, I, I think password managers are something for you to consider um, as a good way of keeping your password secure. And that's just to reiterate that please don't use um, default passwords. That's default passwords basically means passwords that you're originally given um, or recently had a job actually. Um, whereby the, the suspect um, had been handing out passwords to all the individuals. Um, so make sure you change the passwords straight away. These are just examples of uh, what we just mentioned in regards to remembering passwords. Um, obviously, the easier they are, the quicker they are to break. Uh, daughter, instantly. Uh, Fred, one, two, three, four um, minutes uh, with a special character in the middle there. We're still only talking minutes. Um, Ewan, 1983, two hours. Well, we're still in the grand scheme of things. If you look at these times, you think, well, that's two hours. These hackers sit there doing nothing all day, barring sat eating what sits in their bedrooms. So they've got two hours to spare. Um, they've probably got a few weeks to spare. So when you look at words that you can remember to make it harder, for example, car blue word equal one day, it's getting better. Grass one, etc., is four weeks. But grass, he, and wool, 51 years. And I think there's one more. Four and four words. So we've got shop, house, black, wall, 23 million years. Uh, I don't know about you or I, but I don't think I'll be around by then. The WhatsApps would have gone off. The WhatsApps would have gone <laughs> off, yes. Um, so what they're saying is you, your passwords don't have to be majorly complicated to be strong. If you put an uppercase on each of those four words, shop, house, black wall with a capital letter at the beginning, that would just be a horrendous the, the time scale to break that. But just remember... If you've got one password for all your accounts, you only need to find one. So you need to consider obviously using multiple accounts and uh, multiple passwords. And the last one, computer game, good play, 607 million years. Um, and it can get stronger. This website <coughs> is run by, some of you may have heard him, some of you may have not. Uh, a gentleman called Troy Hunt. Uh, it's American uh, gent, does quite a lot with the FBI. Uh, he signed up to quite a lot of things, but anyway. Australian, isn't he? Yeah, he works with the uh, FBI as well. Actually. Mm. He's on my LinkedIn account. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so basically uh, what he does, he goes out there searching all the naughty places and finding compromised data. He doesn't publicise the compromised data, obviously, that would be wrong. Uh, but what he does do, he, he publicises where has been compromised, where has that data been breached. So if you type in your email address into this website called Have I Been Pawned, it will give you an indication whether your data has been breached at any point in the, in the past. Um, there's some most recent up to the back end of 2019, uh, there will be more recent ones now. Um, but basically what they're saying is that your data has been breached, so whether it's your password, your login details, your home address, etc., etc. So, But what are you going to do if it has been breached? Um, which I think the next slide will probably emphasise what to do. Just make sure you regularly consider 
password hygiene. Change your passwords if you do realize that your passwords are being breached. If you start getting emails from people saying that you've won the National Lottery or won the German Lottery that you never entered, there's possibly a link by the fact is that they've got your email address from somewhere. So consider your password changes, refresh them. Online cyber grooming. This can take many forms. Uh, it can show itself in many ways. Um, grooming is something really to be considered. Um, particularly now, again, um, we're saying lots of young, young people, you know, you've got to be, you know, you know on the computers, online. Um, it's become a modern thing for people to do. Um, however, bad guys do go on there. And we're talking about grooming, we're talking about people um, start chatting to them, saying that they're friends, building up a relationship, and then progressing on to uh, committing offences or having offences committed to them. There was something I wanted to say. There was a Breck Bednar story. Um, Sometimes there's a bit of a video in these presentations um, about the Breck Bednar story. You can search for it on YouTube. It is a charity. Um, it's a very sad story, quite hard hitting. Um, and I think probably because we don't know the audience here, uh, we'd normally ask people to um, make see if they're okay with listening to something that could be quite upsetting. Um, but it is something if you are interested or have children or wish to progress it on that further, to show the video, you'll find it online. It's Breck Bednar. If you are concerned with any issues in relation to online activity, there's a um, plethora of, of help online. Um, you can go to the Homicide Police website where we've got links to all these. Uh, Get Safe Online is a charity, uh, fearless.org. Also, uh, Crime Stoppers is anomalous, and there's a regional cyber crime as well. So, um, as you can probably imagine, um, there is an increase in the requirement for cyber security professionals in the industry. Um, I don't know how they predict the shortfall um, or the potential jobs um, that may be in. However, there are opportunities there for young people, they, if they wish to progress into the cyber security area, um, they, they, they can do. Um, we would rather that you would come to the light side and fight for the goodies rather than be with the baddies. Uh, there's opportunities to show your skills in a lot in, in selection of different things. So uh, Code Academy is quite good. There is um, Couple of code dojos and um, another sort of challenges. I know the regional cybercrime do a challenge where um, one year it was a, a national cybercrime challenge where you uh, uh, complete challenges timed based, and at the end of it you got a um, you got a prize. And one of the major major prize was that Microsoft took your details uh, and you're invited to see them and. Um, I think some people have been very successful in progressing um, their careers with <coughs> big standard companies. And that's called the Matrix Challenge. The Matrix Challenge. Here's some examples of um, potential careers in cybersecurity. Um, it's quite wordy. Um, and you'd have to have a look into it really to decide decide what you like. And I'm sure you'll be asking, how do I get into cyber security? And there's various methods. However, I would suggest that you um, gain the experience through, uh, that's Code Dojo, Dojo through um, work experience and, and your colleges and universities or recommended companies. And there are recommended um, certifications and qualifications that are industry recognised and um, Crest is just one of them. There's a um, there's several, but um, it's better that you get a industry approved qualification rather than um, just Bob's 
or threats, um, cyber security, of course. Not that we've got anything against Bob or Fred. Action Fraud is our central repository for reporting online crime. Obviously, uh, we have no boundaries, really. And, and the, these offences can have suspects from all over the country or worldwide. Uh, and as such, we have a central repository, a central place where people can report it, which is Action Fraud. And then it gets sent out to uh, uh, forces or the regional cybercrime, depending on um, whereabouts the offence is occurring. Um, this is a um, gov web government website, cyberaware.gov.uk. Um, colleagues here at the time. Um, cyberaware.gov.uk, I don't think the users find gents on the advertisements anymore. But it's just another repository for help, guidance. Um, so if you've got any questions, protect your business, protect your devices and data. Uh, the website gets updated all the time, so there's uh, plenty of uh, opportunity to get some uh, help and guidance. Take five. Um, this is more linked to uh, fraud offences. Uh, obviously, cybercrime, you know, is linked to fraud in, in that sense, but this is specifically in regards to stopping fraud against people. So if you think of somebody that's actually may have been subjected to some form of fraud, uh, Take Five is a fantastic website to go to. That's the, the 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 idea behind it is you get those messages from your phone. Quick, do something now! It's it's um, you've got ten seconds to stop all your money coming out of your account. Uh, and the advice, um, particularly to the vulnerable, is I'm going to minute Take Five, have a little check. Let's let's have a let's have a think about what we've got here now. We have to rush into making a decision right away. You know, your money's not going to go away. Don't worry about what it is. Take five and then then, then make a decision on the uh, authenticity of it. Get safe online. That's us. And that brings us to the end. Um, I don't know if I can check if there's any questions at all. Uh, and I'm not going to bother question. What we'll, what we'll probably do is um, so I'm just having a look now to see if there's anything on the on the stage. Oh, we've put a link to the Breck Bednar story. That's great. Thanks, April. Thank you very so much. What I would say is, if you've got any questions or anything, you can always drop us a line. You can respond to our um, Twitter page. We have information there. Um, we have an email address, which is um, monitored quite frequently. Um, and we'll get back to you. And we'll stay online. Is there any questions on the chats or any polls or anything like that? We'll, we'll uh, attempt to answer them. If you um, wish for any advice or any sort of contact, just don't hesitate to, uh, to make contact with us. All right. Thanks ever so much for having us. Um, really appreciate it. It's a little bit weird not being able to see anybody or anybody's reactions. But I'm sure there's thousands of you all watching us now. Um, so thanks very much for having us. Thank you.